In this video, I'll demonstrate how to add one or more delivery servers to your MailWiz application. Delivery servers are needed to do the actual sending of all emails from MailWiz to your subscribers. This is true for any type of email you want to send – confirmation emails, test emails, and of course, email campaigns. In this example, I'll show how to use your domain host and MailWiz's back end to set this up. I've logged into cPanel and I'll click File Manager. Inside Public HTML, the newsletter folder is where I've installed MailWiz, and within that folder, Backend is the folder that has everything I need for setting up my MailWiz details. So in a separate browser tab, I'll enter my MailWiz dashboard by going to mysitename.com slash newsletter slash backend slash index.php. I'll enter the email and password I used during the MailWiz installation when I set myself up as the MailWiz admin. This is your MailWiz dashboard where you have control over everything – subscribers, emails, monetization, and much more. The main dashboard page gives a general overview of your account so far, which at the moment doesn't show anything except for one customer, which is myself. What we want to set up here is the delivery server, so click Servers then Delivery Servers. There is no server set up yet, so I'll click Create New Server. Here's the list of all of the servers that work with MailWiz. If you're a beginner, the easiest option is SMTP, which is your host's default outgoing mail server. Depending on the hosting package you have, you may be able to send unlimited emails, but sometimes you'll have email quotas, or limits to how much you can send over a particular period of time. These other servers can take over once you've reached your quota. For example, if your host server allows you to send 100 emails per day and you want to send out 250, you can open an account with Mailgun to handle the next 100 and SendGrid for the remaining 50. MailWiz will automatically know which servers to use when. These are generally paid services, some of which have free starter plans. For example, here is SendGrid's pricing structure, in which you can get 100 emails sent per day for free. It's a good idea to look into a few of these services, to compare pricing and inbox rates. The inbox rate refers to the number of emails you send that actually arrive in your subscribers' inboxes, as opposed to those emails that are treated as spam. This is another advantage offered by paid services. When you used your domain host's SMTP server, you're using shared hosting, which means all customers who use that hosting provider send their emails using the same SMTP server as you. This increases the chances of your email ending up being treated as spam. Paid services provide dedicated hosting, not shared. The easiest server to set up for now, at least while you're getting started, is to use your host's outgoing mail handler SMTP. On this page are several fields you need to fill out, similar to when you set up your database and cron jobs. To get the information for these fields, you need to first set up an email account for your domain. To do this, you'll need to go back to your hosting dashboard, in my case, cPanel. Here's my cPanel dashboard, and I can set up email accounts here under email. To set up my first account, I'll enter my email name, and the email address is already set according to the domain name. I'll also enter a password and confirm it. I'll choose an unlimited storage quota, though your particular plan may have a limit. I'll choose to receive a welcome email that will have configuration instructions, then I'll create the account. Now if I click Email Accounts, I can see the one I just set up. To read my emails, I can click Access Webmail. Webmail simply means a website where you can read and manage your emails, as opposed to a standalone mail client such as Outlook. If you're asked to choose a default email viewing app, such as Horde, choose any option. Here's the email sent by cPanel, and this includes the data I'll need to enter into MailWiz. I'll leave this email open. Returning to MailWiz, I could start filling in these fields for the new delivery server. But before doing that, I'll set up a bounce server so that it can be entered here. A bounce server is an incoming mail handler, sending emails back to you when an email you send reaches a dead email address. Setting up a bounce server is optional, 
you can set up a delivery server and send out your emails without specifying a bounce server. But if you ignore bounced emails and continue to send emails to the same dead addresses, you're more likely to be identified as a spammer. So I'll click here on Bounce Servers and Create New. Host name is the name of your incoming server, which I can get from my email that has configuration instructions. I'll select and copy this and paste it here. Username is the email address I set up and the same with the password. Everything else should be fine as the default settings. I'll click Save Changes. Now let's go back to delivery servers. I'll create new and choose SMTP. I'll name it Host SMTP, which will help differentiate it from other services such as Mailgun that I might add in the future if needed. This time the host name is for my outgoing server, which again I can get from my configuration email. In this case, both are the same, but that might not be the case for you. As before, Username and password are those I set up for the email account. Here I'll add the same email address as my username, but this could be different if you want a more generic email to appear in your mailings, such as info at or sales at. You can also enter a from name if you like, which could be your full name or company name rather than an email address. This is optional. Whatever you list in these fields are just default values. You can also set these in your email campaigns. Because I've set up a bounce server, I can specify that here. Before finishing up, note the quota fields, hourly, daily, and monthly. I'm not entering anything here because I have an unlimited plan. But if your plan has limits, it's important to enter those correctly here. Without correct quota information, MailWiz won't know when to stop sending via one delivery server and continue with the next delivery server. MailWiz will continue sending, but everything past your quota will not actually be delivered. I'll leave everything else as the defaults, and I'll click Save Changes. The last important step is to validate the server, to make sure everything works. For the email, you can use the one you just set up, which you can read in your webmail, or you can use an existing email address. Then click Validate Server. Next, you'll need to find and open that email. I'm going back to my webmail, clicking on Refresh, and here's my validation email. I need to click this link to complete the validation, which is now done, and both my delivery and bounce servers are set up. As time goes on and you find yourself sending more email campaigns to more people, you'll have a better sense of how your servers are working, whether you need to add more servers, and the success rate of the various servers.